live from the University of Notre Dame Monday Night Hoops here on the ACC Network Extra. The Fighting Irish set to host the Mount St. Mary's Mountaineers in their home opener of the new college basketball season. And with that, we welcome you into Purcell Pavilion alongside Juan Jose Rodriguez. I'm Nick Valdeseri, and Juan Jose, Notre Dame got off to a great start, a win on Saturday against DePaul. They're now home, a tough place to play here for the opposition. Yeah, Purcell Pavilion, the Irish begin their ninth season here inside this building that's given them a lot of success over the years. Notre Dame's been 47-6 and six over the last three seasons here at home, but they'll be tested right away against a very good Mount St. Mary's team from the Northeast Conference. Yeah, 26 wins for Notre Dame last season. We take a look at the players to watch. Junior Robinson, a senior guard, had 20 points himself on Friday against Marquette. Yeah, Robinson, a four-year starter, stands just 5'5", five five, but you know his impact on the game is so much bigger than that. He touched on the career high in scoring. Also shot a conference best 86.8% from the line. Such an aggressive player on offense and really gets so many chances from the line because of that aggressiveness. On the other side, another senior, Bonzi Colson, decided to bypass the NBA draft this past summer. A double-double for him on Saturday. Yeah, number of preseason accolades for Colson. Contributed 18 points, 13 rebounds in that win over DePaul on Saturday. And his work on both sides of the ball poses a lot of problems for this Mount St. Mary's defense. And hey, you might even see him take a couple of outside shots just to stretch the defense a little more. And with that, we will take a look at tonight's starting lineups. We start with Mount St. Mary's Junior Robinson, the guard we mentioned in the senior. He's joined by three freshmen and a sophomore, a very young unit compared to last season. On the other side, Notre Dame, you start down low, Martena Skeben, Bonzi Colson, Rex Fluger, and Matt Farrell. And how about T.J. Gibbs? A career high, 21 points on Saturday. Yeah, really got the Irish offense rolling, and good to see Gibbs, especially shooting from outside. The Irish have struggled. The exhibition season, shooting from three, but really Gibbs and that really led that Irish offense in that win against DePaul. And there is head coach Mike Bray in his 18th season. The Irish 18-0 in season openers. Now a home opener, and he's just 10 wins away from the all-time mark, uh, tying the all-time mark of Digger Phelps here at Notre Dame. And for Mount St. Mary's, Jamie and Christian in his sixth season, 83 wins. And Juan Jose, he's all about that phrase, Mount Mayhem. And Nick, what exactly is Mount Mayhem? It's press defense that limits opponents threes and takes a lot of their own. And it's really an up-tempo style of play that it's going to really be a clash with Notre Dame's efficiency and really trying to slow down the game. Should be an interesting matchup here tonight. And tip-off controlled by Notre Dame. Tonight's officials, Jerry Heater, Mike Stewart, Jeff Clark, the Irish in the home whites, Mount St. Mary's in the road blues. And Notre Dame coming off that fresh win against DePaul at Wintrust Arena, opening that arena in Chicago, Illinois. And Bonzi gets going early and knocks home the jump shot. And what do we see right away from Colson getting inside, getting a nice open look? Now St. Mary's, they start off against the Golden Eagles of Marquette, fell 80 to 59, but this man right here, Robinson with 20 points, six assists and four rebounds. This backcourt duo of Robinson and Carey, a really interesting one, senior, freshman, but Carey noted as the starting point guard at 6'5". Bobby Planudis. Robinson, double team. Planudis inside. Gomes, easy basket as the shot clock was winding down. And some nice passing inside by the big men, Planudis and Gomes. We've seen that a lot from the Irish's big men, but good to see that from Mount St. Mary's getting the easy bucket. Rex Fluger. Inside of Colson, up just wide. Took a dribble off that rim as well. Mount St. Mary's controls. Robinson pops from way downtown. Too strong rebound, Fluger. We saw Bonzi Colson active here early so far on this one. And what a day he had. The double double for the senior. And how about that senior? Marty Gebbin with a two hand jam. Irish back up by two. This is the third time these two teams have met. Notre Dame have won both of them back in 2003 and 2014, the most recent one in that game. Jaron Grant, Steve Astoria, Zach August all scored 19 as Gomes misses the floater. Farrell pushing the pace, guarded by Robinson. Gavin again on that block. At 5.7 rebounds against DePaul. Somehow gets it out. Almost traveled. Fluger, a little float shot too short. Rebound, Jonah Antonio. 
Kevin early on trying to establish in the post. Antonio wide open from three, too strong. And look at Colson among the trees, able to get that rebound. We mentioned the styles of play. Mount St. Mary's likes to pressure defensively, a top 25 defensive turnover, turnover efficiency the last four years. Pfluger flying in to get that rebound and gets fouled doing so, but Mountaineers like to play that pressure defense. Great three-point shooting team. Talking to head coach Christian, he wants his team to shoot over 35 threes a game. The Irish on the other side, not the fastest paced team, but we've seen Farrell recently being able to push the ball. They like to shoot the three as well. Yeah, and that ability to shoot the three gives you a lot of possessions if you're Mount St. Mary's. And against a team like Notre Dame, you want to get as many of those possessions as you can. And when you take those threes, it gives you an opportunity to really get on a quick run. And you see Pfluger at the line, knocking down the first. He shot 65.5% from the line at last season. And Pfluger one for six against DePaul. But how about nine rebounds? He was all over the place. And he knocks down both free throws and just checked in for the Mountaineers. Greg Alexander, a senior guard. He may not be a starter, but he plays a starter minutes. Played 36 minutes against Marquette on Friday. Robinson down the paint, floater good. And there we see Robinson's ability to penetrate and find the open basket. And we're now starting to see this pressure defense from Mount St. Mary's. Forced the long pass into Colson. And Irish able to break it, but might see some interesting variations on this press as the game unfolds. Colson, nice move to his left, lost the ball on his way up. And the officials rule the ball will remain with the Irish 15 on the shot clock. to take a look at Pfluger and then Gebbin. Gebbin mentioned the five points, seven rebounds. He's going to be replaced here early by the stout freshman, DJ Harvey. Harvey on Saturday, three for four from the floor, one for one from downtown, seven points in 16 minutes. And you see the trust Mike Bray is already putting into a young player like him. And don't be surprised when we see DJ Harvey playing significant minutes in ACC competition once we hit the start of 2018. Coach Bray's mentioned that DJ Harvey's got the body and the physicality, also the style of play, to be ready to play meaningful time against the ACC opponents. And we've seen it already in the exhibition series that he's just been phenomenal offensively. Farrell, great hesitation move. Couldn't finish at the rim. Colson lost it. And the Mountaineers control. Also checked in for them, Omar Abwe, number 13 in blue. He sets the screen. And Colson stepping in, taking it away from Donald Carey to the rim. Up and in. How about Colson? We've seen him so much on the post. If offensively, but getting the steal near midcourt, coming out and getting the transition opportunity, and Colson takes it the length of the floor for the layup. Colson, the ACC preseason player of the year, and Colson doing it again, a block on the three-point shot. It still hit the rim, so a new shot clock for the Mountaineers. Carey at the top of the key. And a look at that shot clock. Will the referees do? And a timeout on the floor. 8-4 Notre Dame here early on the ACC Network Extra. Question heading to break was whether or not the ball had hit the rim. It did not. So the shot clock at 11 seconds and Bonzi Colson Getting going early as he always does on both sides of the ball. Rebounding, shooting, and even shot blocking. So Col seven seconds on the shot clock here for Robinson. Trying to step back, nice play inside, puts it up and in. And Robinson, what a move to get inside. We've seen him drive so much over the course of his four years here at Mount St. Mary's. Had a conference best 86.8% from the free throw line last year, really doing large parts of that willingness to drive inside and create those opportunities. Gibbs driving down the baseline, goes up reverse, puts a spin on it, rebound Alexander. It's a Mount St. Mary's team that made the NCAA tournament last year out of the Northeast Conference. And Alexander, who's well off on that three, did have a large part in contributing. They knocked off New Orleans in the first four at, in Dayton, ended up giving Villanova a pretty good game in that first round. They're only down by one at halftime, lost by 20. Mount St. Mary's team under Christian now that has been to the tournament 
twice in the last three years. Yeah, really great to see their success against Villanova, holding them very to a very close game in the first half. Ultimately, you mentioned, did lose by 20, but still a great opportunity for them to make the tournament and really give Villano Villanova a run for their money in the first half. Yeah, I, should, I should say twice in the last four years for Mount St. Mary's, 2014 and 2017. And there is head coach Jamie and Christian now in his sixth season was the 2016-17 Northeast Conference Coach of the Year and also has been all over the place in the college ranks as Farrell no good on that three. Fluger with a rebound. Christian also an assistant under Shaka Smart at BCU as Fluger goes up and gets the foul. Second time we've seen Fluger impact on the offensive rebound. We saw him really fly in for the tip and get fouled. This time gets it and goes up and under. Draws the foul. Nine rebounds, rebounds against DePaul. Four already here tonight. And Rex Fluger going to play a lot of minutes this season, you know, most notably as a defender, but has shown some range in the exhibition season and also against DePaul. Hit a three in that game against the Blue Demons and is now three for three from the line. And you know, we talked to Coach Bray before the season started, and he obviously highlighted Fluger's defensive capabilities, but even said, the Rex will have an increased offensive role this year. We're already seeing it as he's coming into the starting lineup and really had a nice impact offensively, shooting the ball well. So one for two from the line for Fluger. Fluger averaged 4.7 points per game last year. Now a starter, probably see that number go up. Robinson getting the call from head coach Christian. Here's Jonah Antonio from Australia. I mentioned the three freshmen starting for this Mountaineer squad. There's Omar Abwe. Had to stop. Carey driving the lane. Got it deflected. Another block shot. Looked like Bonzi Colson once again. And a that shot clock violation. The Irish get it back. Yeah, also saw Harvey in there inside the paint. Getting that deflection. Once again, another deep shot clock. Mount St. Mary's forced to take a late shot. And successful defense. The Irish once again forcing a tough look. Bobby Planudis and Ryan Gomes back in for the Mountaineers. Harvey inbounding a full court press. And here is that highly touted full court press for, forcing so many turnovers. Unfortunately for the Mountaineers, they're playing one of the best non-turnover teams in Notre Dame with the second best assist to turnover ratio last season. Gibbs fires away a three, no good. And that Mount St. Mary's defense looking to press and maybe can give the Irish the opportunity for some turnovers, but you mentioned the ability for guys like Farrell and Fluger that can handle the ball so well, it'll be tough for them to turn the ball over. And a transition opportunity. Farrell handed it off to Harvey, no good from three. And quick back the other way, another three from Antonio. That's too strong. You're seeing the fast pace between these two teams. Love to shoot the rock from behind the arc. But the Irish now one for eight in their last eight attempts. Haven't scored in the last 240, or I should say field goals in the last 240. As Colson fires away as a three and gets fouled on the attempt. And we're just six, minute, six and a half minutes into this game, Nick, and Mount St. Mary's already shot five threes, hasn't made one yet. Notre Dame has shot three before that Colson look. But both teams still held off the board from three. Yeah, almost but a four-point opportunity for Notre Dame right there. Yeah, that one was so close for Colson. That would have given them a seven-point lead. Colson will have three at the line, knocks down the first. Last season, Bonzi Colson averaged 17.8 points per game, 10 rebounds, and shot the three particularly well, 43% from downtown on 26 makes. And at the line was 78%, and two for two so far as Gibbs will check out for Rex Fluger, who got a quick break. Elijah Burns in there as well for Notre Dame. Notre Dame struggled from behind the arc in the exhibition season and even in the first half against DePaul, but 9 for 12 in the second half against the Blue Demons as a lane violation will knock off that third free throw. It didn't go in either way, but 11-6 now Irish. And what a turnaround. We saw the Irish go 2 for 20 in their exhibition game against Bethel from three-point land. And then the second half against DePaul to go 9 of 12, really seeing that turnaround as the Irish are beginning to develop that outside shot and continue to see success from that area. And Matt Farrell extended his streak of hitting a three-pointer to 27 games, the longest active streak in the ACC. Inside to the elbow. 
Out wide to Antonio. And look at that defense. Fluger flying in. Six on the shot clock for the Mountaineers. And when you have a guard forward like Fluger that stands six foot six, that's so versatile, can guard virtually every position on the floor. It just makes it so difficult for opposing offenses because you'll often see Fluger guarding an offense's best player. And we see him here against Lanudis, a very good shooter. Robinson from way downtown, no good. Nice rebound by Abwe, the freshman. Off the bench, played at 13 minutes in that Marquette game. The Irish playing a zone, which tends to favor the three-point shooting, but you've got to be able to pass the ball around the perimeter as well. And a lot of standing around Lanudis. And we've already seen the Irish force Mount St. Mary's into a couple of deep shot clock possessions, so that's another opportunity, or another consequence of playing zone. Cross-court pass to the corner, no good. How about Gomes? Flying in, climbing that mountain, if you will, as a Mountaineer, getting that offensive board and the foul to go with it. And a little too aggressive by Devin going after the rebound. And Gomes hit the deck. First team foul committed by the Irish. Almost eight minutes into this first half. Yeah, four fouls on the Mountaineers. So a new shot clock. Robinson and company trying to dissect this zone. Both teams have been held off the board in the last three and a half minutes. Mount St. Mary's 0 for the last six shooting from the field. Shot by Carey from deep. Short coming in. Platunas, he was high up in the air. Couldn't finish. The Irish will have an inbounds underneath their own basket. With 12 minutes remaining in this first half and a timeout on the floor. We had to break. A five-point lead for Notre Dame here on the ACC Network Extra. An early five-point lead for Notre Dame. Colson already with six points and three rebounds. He's been all over the place on the defensive side as well. And there you see some of his accolades. 2017 preseason ACC player of the year, also part of that AP All-American team in the preseason. That's a good starting five, if you ask me. Yeah, and good to see Colson getting that recognition. We saw him really break out his junior season and playing alongside another senior in Matt Farrell. Just a dynamite combination on the pick and roll especially, and we've seen in a variety of offensive situations. Yeah, and we talked about that preseason All-American team. Miles Bridges, Alonzo Trier, Jalen Brunson, and Michael Porter Jr., the other four to join. Bonzi Colson. Here's TJ Gibbs controlling Farrell 0 for 3 on the night so far, trying to get things going. Lost it for a second. Reset out to Gibbs. Got the screen from Gebbin. Fluger at the free throw line. Step back. In and out. Rebound Gomes. He had it, but Platunis, Platunis, excuse me, and Burns tied up. A jump ball. That'll be Mountaineers basketball. And Nick, one thing I'm really noticing early on this height of Mount St. Mary's giving the Irish quite a bit of trouble, especially inside in the paint. You see a lot of guys, really the shortest one you'll see is six foot five, and when you're going against guards like Matt Farrell, who's 6'1", it'll be interesting to see how these Mount St. Mary's players use their height to their advantage against some of the smaller guys from Notre Dame. Yeah, we mentioned Carey, Antonio Planutis, three freshmen, but 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five, and 6'8", to go alongside a sophomore center in Ryan Gomes, 6'10". It's a lot of size for a Mountaineers team that Looking to get back to the NCAA tournament this season. How about the three-point shot from Jonah Antonio? The red shirt freshman is a high-volume shooter from downtown. Hits his first three of the night. And led the team in minutes in that game against Marquette. So somebody that saw a lot of action and in those minutes taking a lot of threes. Farrell, Burns will take it from deep. And Burns knocks down a three-point shot. Elijah Burns with his first career three-point field goal, and the Irish extend it to five. When we talked to Coach Bray, you know, he said Burns has really developed a 15 to 18-foot jump shot in addition to his play inside the post. Bray didn't really tell us about that three-point shot, but Burns is a really nice shot from outside. You might see that a little bit more as the season progresses. Too strong from Antonio, the first Australian to ever play for the Mount. And how about his block on the other side on a driving Matt Farrell? Robinson stops, pops, way downtown, and hits. Robinson, you mentioned, Nick, that Mount Mayhem to start the game, that philosophy that Coach Christian brings to the table. 
And Robinson, no hesitation, took that one from deep before the Irish defense could get set. And a really nice shot from the senior Robinson. Cross-court pass, the extra pass to Farrell out wide. That one rattles in and out, rebound. Antonio. And a foul there. Bray reinserting Bonzi Colson and DJ Harvey. The push there on Matt Farrell. I think that's an effort by Bray. We talked about just a moment ago the size that Mount St. Mary's brings to the table. So bring Farrell out of the game in place of Harvey, and you have Burns and Colson already in there. Definitely allows for the Irish to play a bigger lineup and really equate to what Mount St. Mary's is bringing to the floor. First foul on Matt Farrell. He takes a seat on the bench. Here is Robinson. The Mountaineers just two for 11 from three, but you're seeing that high volume from downtown. Robinson inside, and look at Colson step in. Gets a second effort. Lost by Abwe. And a new shot clock for the Mountaineers. Alexander will step back, shoot, and hits. Nice looking jump shot from the senior out of Hampton, Virginia. Mount St. Mary's now just 6 of 19, but holding the Irish to 4 of 15. We, talk, we talked about the pressure defense, and it's paying off early for the Mountaineers. That will stay Irish ball. Yeah, this one all tied up. Notre Dame has just taken 15 shots compared to the Mountaineers' 19. Still no free throw attempts from the Mountaineers, who really resort to that three-point shot, so not a lot of driving to get those charity stripe trips. Fluger now driving baseline, goes straight up and fouled hard at the rim by Planutis. And back to the line goes Fluger, who's already shot four free throws, made three of them. Fluger was a 65% free throw shooter a season ago, but already making his impact today from the free throw line. All three of his points coming from the stripe, an opportunity to add a couple more. And Fluger had himself a summer, got to play for the East Coast All-Stars, the U.S. travel team coached by legend Larry Brown. Four games in Spain, sounds pretty good to me, and hit the game winner in the first game of that journey, if you will. Also played alongside Notre Dame teammate Austin Torres. And you see that average points per game last year, just under five, but really something we've seen from Fluger in the summer and now in the early part of this season. That jump shot looks a lot smoother, and as he's going to have that increased offensive role, it's going to be something that he's going to really rely upon, that smooth jump shot, and we'll see how, how high that points per game output will increase from his sophomore year to now his junior year. Yeah, Fluger hit 27 threes last year, just eight in his freshman season. We expect that number to climb once again. Fluger makes both free throws. He's got five on the night. Irish back up by two. Carey being guarded by Harvey. Irish going with a man-to-man. -man. We saw the zone early. And now with 12 on the shot clock, Mountaineers have to dissect the man. Antonio inside to Abwe. Abwe up and uh, hits. How about Omar Abwe? Nice little move. And Abwe, who didn't score against Marquette, gets his first collegiate basket as a freshman for the Mountaineers. And Abwe, a really nice job getting past Burns the up and under. And Colson bumped on that shot. He'll head to the line. And Colson, six points, three rebounds. Working on Antonio. And two fouls on Antonio. We also saw two fouls on Planutis a couple of minutes ago. The Mountaineers have made the last three field goals. Irish still have not hit a field goal in the last few minutes and 40 seconds. They're struggling from the field, one for eight of the last eight, but doing the work on the line as Gomes checks back in for the Mountaineers. Yeah, right now just four of 15 are the Irish shooting from the field. Mount St. Mary's not much better at seven for 20. But it's this defense, a strength of both these teams that's really had an impact so far these first 12 minutes. And the Irish will be in the bonus on the next team foul committed by the Mountaineers. Just two team fouls by the Irish. 
Screen by Gomes. Robinson step backs in. Wraparound pass inside. And a traveling violation on Ryan Gomes. So a tight one here so far. We've played roughly 12 minutes at Purcell Pavilion, 18-16 Notre Dame. Three hundred and eighty-three wins, the total for Mike Bray in 18 years here at Notre Dame. Now 10 away from tying the legend, Digger Phelps, 11 away from notching the all-time mark. And in those banners, too, we saw Kayla McBride this weekend on the Notre Dame women's side. Terrific player, get put in the ring of honor. The Irish out of the timeout trying to find an option, and that full-court press doing its job. The Irish had to take a timeout, and it will have to reset underneath the basket. Oh, it's going to be a turnover. Fluger thought he had the timeout, but a turnover it is, so Mount St. Mary's gets possession back. I saw Fluger signal for the timeout, so it must have been just a hair late. Interesting call by the officials, but as of now it stands, Mount St. Mary's with possession. Robinson inside the paint, off the backboard, and in. Junior Robinson. Doing it all so far for the Mountaineers, up to nine points now. John Mooney, who's checked in for the Irish off that timeout. Colston, easy basket, turnaround, floater for the senior. And that snaps a drought of almost three and a half minutes. The Irish held without a field goal. But on the other side, Mount St. Mary's clawing right back in for their last four. Nice kick out, Alexander for three, he hits. And Mount St. Mary's has taken the lead, their first lead of the night, 21-20, and they are five for five on their last five field goals. And Alexander had nine points, and was two of five from three against Marquette. So he's shown a capability to shoot from distance. Colson, turnaround jump shot, is short off the offensive rebound. And Alexander led the Mountaineers in three-point field goal makes last season. Primarily off the bench. Gomes inside on the left block. Turns around, foul by Mooney. And the sophomore Gomes will head to the line to shoot two. And Mooney thought he had gotten a clean contact on the block. But Alexander doing a nice job getting inside, finding Gomes. And Gomes will head to the line for a pair. And Gomes last season shot just 40% from the charity strap, but only took 10 attempts. So he makes his first attempt of the season did not shoot from the charity stripe in the game against Marquette. Actually, he did. He was 0 for 2. So now he's 2 for 4 on the young season. And with Gebbin out of the game for the Irish, Gomes has a height advantage over every Notre Dame player. Mooney's the tallest for the Irish on the floor right now at 6'9", but Gomes giving him a lot of trouble inside. Mooney from the corner. Too strong, Farrell, easy rebound. Hesitated, step back to his left, that one off the mark, and Colson able to clean it up with a two-hand jam. Yeah, Farrell on the rebound with a quick pump fake. Tried to get inside, took another shot, but Colson right there, as you mentioned, right place, right time with the easy putback. And now you're starting to hear the crowd behind the Irish. Gomes to the rack, missed it, rebound Mooney. Colson on the right block, turnaround jump shot, money. And there you see a senior versus freshman, Abwe. Doesn't really know what to do. Colson's so experienced. And you can't really guard that much better. Colson just with the right hand able to put it right over the freshman. And we've seen Colson do that a number of times. Turnover by Robinson. Irish in transition. Farrell out to Fluger. Colson. Gibbs at the right elbow, puts it up and in! Who plus the harm? TJ Gibbs to the line to shoot one. And for Gibbs, we saw him in that breakout game against DePaul to start the season for Notre Dame. And that aggressiveness continuing to pay off. Had 21 points, a career high on Saturday. And now for Gibbs, only a couple of points now. That was his first bucket of the game. But a huge one is it really swings momentum, continuing to swing that momentum more toward the Irish. That's the second foul on Robinson. He stays in the game. Planudis back in the game as well. He's got two fouls. 
So Gibbs, with his first two points, gets the third on the night with that free throw. And it's about time someone helped. Fonsi Colson, who's got 14 points out of the 27 for Notre Dame. And we highlighted the Irish on a three and a half minute drought and all of a sudden now going on a 7-0 run in the last minute of play. Carey, spin move, couldn't get by Gibbs. Good defense on the perimeter. Robinson gets the screen from Abwe on Harvey the freshman. And Colson jumping in the pass lane. Three on the shot clock. Fluger steals. Fluger down the paint. Up foul and will head to the line to shoot two. That pesky defense on the Irish side forcing a late shot clock and a late turnover. Fluger averaged almost a steal per game last year, doing it on the floor once again, forcing the turnover and going coast to coast. Went in, drawing the contact, almost got it up and in, but he'll go to the line once again for free throw attempts number seven and eight already in this first half. Yeah, Fluger had a steal against DePaul, a steal tonight. And hits the first free throw. And keep in mind, Mount St. Mary's did lose by 21 to Marquette on Friday. But that second half, they tied the Golden Eagles 32-32 and started shooting the ball a little bit better. They didn't shoot well overall, just 7 of 28 from beyond the arc for 25%. But hanging tight here, but Fluger another steal. Farrell back to Fluger. Reverse layup, up and in. And timeout, Jamie and Christian. He's seen enough. Notre Dame extends the lead, 31-23. Four minutes left here on the ACC Network Extra. An 11-0 run has seen the Irish take an eight-point lead, 31-23. Mike Bray's got to be pleased with that. He's got to be pleased with his senior, Bonzi Colson. An offensive rebound, a two-hand jam there. He averaged three offensive rebounds last season and already has three tonight. And how about the Irish defensively as well? Fluger with back-to-back -back steals. And the Irish are rolling. Yeah, Colson with 14 and five. Fluger with nine and five. So obviously the scoring is there for guys like Colson and Fluger, but really have to love the rebounding, especially on the offensive glass. A hallmark of a Mike Bray coach team. They're doing it once again tonight to open up the home season here in South Bend. Kick out, Planudis for three, and that low arcing shot is good. A nice response from the Mountaineers out of the timeout. And a great shot from Planudis, halting the 11-0 run from the Irish. But they really stormed out after the Mountaineers had taken a quick lead. Harvey on Planudis, left hand layup no good. Robinson controls, he's got nine on the night. Mountaineers shooting 42%, the Irish 36. Planudis on Colson. Nice hands by Colson. Carey step back three, that's good. So back to back freshman threes for the Mountaineers. They close the gap to two. And it's all about rhythm when you're, one, when you're a three point shooting team like Mount St. Mary's is. If you're able to get on a run, get in some rhythm, then you're a very dynamite team, and we're already seeing that as the Mountaineers have consistently been able to close the gap. And what a spin move by Gibbs. Opens up the lane and an easy layup for him. And Gibbs now with five. And Nick, you touched on it at the top. Mount St. Mary's tries to shoot 35 threes a game. They're on pace right now. They've already shot 14, and we still have a couple minutes to play in this first half and still obviously the rest of the second. No call on that play as Gibbs went to the floor. Abwe couldn't convert. Turnover, Irish. Fluger steps in nicely, though. Farrell for three, and he hits. That's a big time swing, and Matt Farrell now extends that streak of hitting a three pointer to 28 games. We mentioned earlier, the longest active streak in the ACC. And it all goes back. Planudis tried to throw it off a couple of Irish players on the sideline, and it bounced fortuitously right to Fluger, and he hit the three. Bonzi. Reaching in the sky for that rebound. Gibbs in transition. Right hand layup is good. Notre Dame not afraid to get out in transition. 38-29. And once again, a game of runs. Irish, a 7-0 run over the last minute. So right as Mount St. Mary's has cut the gap to two after a couple of threes. The Irish 
Coming right back out, now once again leading by nine. Seven for their last eight field goals are the Irish. Three by Alexander, short rebound, Fluger. And Fluger throws it all the way up to the corner. Farrell will take the quick three, short. And now with one minute and some change, Mount St. Mary's trying to pull back. Down nine here on the road against the newly 13th ranked Notre Dame. That pull coming out today. The Irish came out 14th in both preseason polls and moved up a spot after their win over DePaul. That 14th rank was the highest they've been ranked in the preseason since 09. And how about Robinson? Answers with a three. And the Mountaineers six for 17 from downtown. Robinson with 12. Gibbs again a spin move at the free throw line. Kicked out to Colson. Harvey driving baseline. Kick out Gibbs, the three pointer. No good, short. Farrell gets it back and the Irish will play for the last shot. Fluger with the offensive rebound as the clock had ticked under 30. So a nice pursuit by Rex Fluger. It gives the Irish the last shot of the half. Farrell loses it. Abwa on the ground, a jump ball. It'll go back to Notre Dame. A little sloppy play there by Farrell. But the Irish, once again, you mentioned the turnover by Farrell. Notre Dame will get it back. They've got the jump ball to figure out their opportunity with the last six and a half seconds to go. It's a six point lead for Notre Dame. We saw Matt Farrell almost lose the ball there a second ago, but hit a crucial three right before that. He's got three points, one of nine shooting from the floor. He struggled from the floor, but active with two assists and two rebounds as well. And there is the senior from Bridgewater, New Jersey. And we saw that uptick in points, 14.1 points per game last season. Yeah, an 11 and a half point per game jump from his sophomore year to his junior year. That jumped the 17th best in ACC history, putting together some of the great performances that we've seen over the years in the conference. And Matt Farrell putting his name on that list with an outstanding breakout season his junior year and looking to do that once again in his final season here in South Bend. Yeah, Farrell had 30 of his 31 double-digit scoring games last season. Colson with four seconds. Step back by Bonzi. It's good! Bonzi Colson capping off the half with a turnaround jump shot, and the Irish take an eight-point lead to the half, 40-32 to 32 over the Mount St. Mary Mountaineers. The Irish came back strong to end that first half, 42% from the field, and that eight-point lead. Yeah, great finish to the half by the Irish. They had a little bit of a drought thanks to that Mount St. Mary's defense, and the Mountaineers getting some quick threes but it's the, the experience of guys like Farrell and Colson and then Gibbs and Fluger on the scoring end to really give the Irish a great output to end this first half. Colson with 16. We'll be back here on the other side of the break. The students out in full force here at Purcell Pavilion. An eight-point lead at the half for Notre Dame. Of course, led by Bonzi Colson. What a terrific half it was. And Mike Bray seeking win number 300 and 84 at Notre Dame. And if he can do that, he's just nine away from tying Digger Phelps. And of course, Mike Bray, the historic run here at Notre Dame, and can match and eventually surpass Coach Phelps, potentially even before the turn of the new year. So Bray definitely exciting progress here in South Bend. So the inbound here from Bobby Planutis, and we are underway here in the second half. It was a valiant effort by the Mountaineers in the first 20, hanging with the Irish, but a turnover quickly, Bossy Colson stepping in. We talked all about the stifling defense of Mount St. Mary's in the first half, trying to limit Notre Dame's opportunities, but the Irish have had some great turnovers, leading to that finish by Gavin. Yeah, Martinez, Gavin, who plus the harm for the senior on the feed by Gibbs. And Gavin only played seven minutes in that first half was one for one for the field, make it two for two, and using that strength, getting through Jonah Antonio, and he's got one now at the charity stripe. And one of the big storylines coming in today was the size that Mount St. Mary's brings to the table. You look at some of their starters up front, Planutis 6'8", 
Gomes, 6'10". And Gevin stands 6'10", but when he's out of the game, the Mountaineers have a significant height advantage, so count on Gevin to really bring some of that height into the game when he's in. Seven rebounds for him against DePaul. Had a terrific summer himself playing in the World University Games for Lithuania, who took home the gold against the U.S. team. Platunas gets it blocked by Colson. And here come the Irish up to Gibbs in transition up, and the blocking foul will lead to another pair of free throws for Notre Dame. And how about Bonzi Colson with the block? Led the team last year almost a block and a half per game and does it standing only six foot six and getting up to swat that one away from the six foot eight platoonist. And once again, the Irish running the floor, getting another opportunity. Gibbs with free throws number two and three on the night. And Colson with his second block on the night. There is TJ Gibbs. Eight points, three of six from the field. And I'll try to make it three for three from the line. He does. And Gibbs, of course, with a career high, 21 points in a winning effort against DePaul. He was terrific from start to finish. Four three-pointers made. And he really helped lead that surge in the second half to take that one from the Blue Demons. Alexander will shoot the three, no good. Here come the Irish back the other way. Farrell, screened by Gevin. Easy jump shot for Farrell, and easy basket. And a quick timeout taken by Jamie and Christian. Has not liked the way his team started this second half. It's a 15-point lead, Notre Dame. And there's Matt Farrell with that jump shot before the timeout. Capped off the 7-0 run to start this second half, and undoubtedly, Matt Farrell had the best Christmas present last year. His now assigned Captain Bo Farrell, his brother, was surprising him last year. What a surprise it was. First lieutenant then serving in Afghanistan. Of course, military appreciation night here at Purcell Pavilion. Now in the stands. He's been in the stands a lot since that game last year. Great to see him. And it was a terrific surprise last year when Farrell was surprised by his brother who was staying in South Bend and returned home early, was initially scheduled to return home in February of this year, but was able to come home a couple of months early, surprise his brother Matt, and not a dry eye in Purcell Pavilion that night as Bo returned. And how about that return from the timeout? Fluger to Gebbin, and the dunk. Notre Dame now on a 9-0 run to start this second half, a 17-point lead. Alexander, Robinson, Carey, Antonio, and Gomes as that shot off the mark. Rebound, Colson. That's Colson's eighth rebound of the night. Farrell off the glass, no good. Gevin misread it, rebound, Gomes. And Gevin had to hold off because that ball was on the cylinder for a long time. If Gevin would have tried to tip it back in, it would have been offensive interference. Luger got a little bit too aggressive there on the challenge, going for the steal. And we mentioned out of that break, Fluger on their first possession. Look at this Fluger play, penetrating, and then finding Gebbin on the left block in the two-hand jam. And Mike Bray has talked about Martinez Gebbin and said he needs to play with confidence and play with that strength. Because when he does that, he's got to be on the floor for us. He's that important. And really a lot of that confidence came from his outstanding performances when he played for Lithuania in the World University Games over the summer. Obviously, the hallmark of Gevin's game is the defense, the rebounding. But if he can contribute just a little bit on the scoring end, it'll just be that much bigger of a boost to this Irish offense. Robinson short on the three off the save by Alexander. And look at Gibbs and Gomes going at it. And a foul there on Gibbs. First personal on Gibbs. And you see Gevin once again, 12.7 rebounds in that gold medal game against the United States, who is represented by the Purdue University team. So Gebbin going against competition from all over the world and really shining on the biggest stage in international play over the summer. And if he can translate that play into this 2017-18 season, his senior year in South Bend, it'll be so important as he plays alongside other seniors like Colson and Farrell and just provides another body, another option offensively and 
Obviously, we've seen all the defense and rebounding success that he can provide. Fluger up and under. Can't get it to go. There is Gebbin, offensive rebound, but lost it. Alexander came away with it. Here's Robinson, 12 points, 5'11 from the field. There's his senior, senior teammate, no good from three. Quick up ahead, Colson to the rim, up and in. Nice feed from Matt Farrell, and Colson with 18 now on the night. And the senior to senior, you just see that chemistry from Farrell to Colson. We obviously talk about so much the pick and roll aspect, the dynamic that Colson and Farrell bring to the table in that regard. But you see just the ability to transition, and Colson runs the floor exceptionally well for a big man. And Farrell hit him with the pass, and Farrell once again with the shot. And he hits another three. Matt Farrell from downtown, a 22-point lead and a 14-0 run to start this second half. Notre Dame up 54-32 here on the ACC Network Extra. What a start to the second half for Notre Dame. 14-0 run here in the first three minutes and 50 seconds. Notre Dame, of course, part of that ACC conference. Under head coach Mike Bray won the ACC championship back in 2015. Almost won it last year, too, against Duke. That's a tough conference. We've seen how good they've become. North Carolina, of course, the reigning national champions. And part of that ACC slate. Notre Dame will have North Carolina here on January 12th. And Bray joked before the season started that if they would have won the ACC twice in five years, they might have had to kick the Irish out of the ACC for coming in and immediately sealing some conference championships. And finally, Mount St. Mary's able to get on the board here in the second half, a three-pointer there by Planudis. He's got six on the night. And an offensive foul on Elijah Burns. We'll send it back the other way. For Mount St. Mary's after giving up such a big run. See if they can claw back into this game. We saw them in the first half. They got down by nine or 10 and then made a couple of threes and got themselves right back into it. And a team that shoots so many threes like Mount St. Mary's tries to do, it's all about trying to get into that rhythm, see if you can make one or two. And once you see them go in, then that confidence really starts to build and you can get on a run from there. Robinson inside of Gomes, reverse, up and in. Nice play. And that's the first assist from Robinson, who had six on the night against Marquette this past Friday. And Bonzi Colson nearing that double-double again, 18 points, nine rebounds. Luger inside to Colson. Colson on the freshman, Planutis. Turnaround jump shot is good. And we, we've talked about the size of Mount St. Mary's. But when it's experience versus inexperience, you see things like that. And we've seen Colson from that exact spot do that a couple of times. The right block going over a freshman from Mount St. Mary's. And we've seen that turn around the right hand. And it's just been a money move for Colson over the last couple of years and obviously doing it again. A three by Antonio. Antonio no good. Rebound Gibson. Colson fighting for it. Colson wanted that double-double. Up ahead to Burns. Stays in bounce. Nice save, Fluger, step back, jump shot is off the mark, rattled in and out. Here comes Robinson. 12 points, blocked by Colson. Denied at the rim once more. Farrell in transition. Slows it down and will reset with Colson at the top of the key. But Colson thinks otherwise off the mark on that shot. Robinson had a hesitation move to get inside, but. Colson denying the shot at the rim. Now the other end just missing a long two. Already at 20 points on 8 of 11 shooting. And we're just, we still have 14 minutes to play in the second half. So the Mount St. Mary's missed their first eight threes of the night. And have now go one for eight here in, one for seven in the second half. Make it two for eight. Nice shot by Antonio. As they've struggled, though, out of the break. Still down 16 here after that triple. Beat the shot clock there. The shot from Antonio getting off just before the expiration of the shot clock. Out to Fluger. 
Telling Colson to fade. Eight on the shot clock. Top of the key, Farrell. Guarded by Robinson. Farrell diving in towards the paint. Burns got it off. And how about the tip-in shot by Pfluger? Quite reminiscent of that game winner against Stephen F. Austin a couple of years back. Nick, that was exactly what flashed in my head. Pfluger almost the exact same move. I think it might have just been a different hand against Stephen F. Austin tipped in with the right hand versus the left hand on this shot. But you're right, just flying in. We've seen that already from Pfluger a number of times. Nine rebounds so far in this game to go along with 11 points. Quite a few of those nine rebounds have come on the offensive end, and it's been plays like that. Coming in from the outside, getting it a tip in. And Antonio from downtown again. The first Australia-born player to play for Mount St. Mary's. And he's on a roll here. He's got nine on the night. But you said Fluger, one rebound away from a double-double. That would be his first career double-double. How about Colson, a rebound away from his 25th career double-double. Farrell diving in. Easy shot at the rim. And timeout, Mike Bray. They've made it a 17-point lead, 60-43, to 43, as we've got 12 minutes remaining here on the ACC Network Extra at Purcell Pavilion. Bonzi Colson and Rex Fluger on the bench there, both just a rebound away from double-doubles tonight. And how about Mr. Bonzi Colson? He's been terrific on the offensive glass and defensive glass, and 20 points, how about that? Yeah, Colson doing it all offensively as we've seen from him over the last couple of years. And obviously named to the ACC, the all National All-American preseason team and was named the ACC Preseason Player of the Year. So Colson being nationally recognized and we're seeing for good reason. Burns with the rebound, up ahead to Farrell. Cross court pass to Harvey, who goes down the baseline. Almost lost it, but Farrell does a good job retrieving it. In the corner, Mooney back out to Gibbs with 16 on the shot clock. Gibbs inside, blocked at the rim though by Alexander. Burns offensive rebound. He tried it once, couldn't get it, got it back. A new shot clock for the Irish. Burns posting up Planutis. Right hand up. We'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. Burns trying to will that one in. He got good position inside on the right block. And a nice right hand look as we take another look. Going up against Planutis. Thought he might have been able to roll that one in, but we'll get a couple looks at the free throw line. Yeah, nice night for Elijah Burns. Three points with a three pointer, four rebounds. That free throw is up and in. Last season, Burns just averaged 0.8 points per game and shot seven of eight from the line. So he's a good free throw shooter, and he's been able to extend that range out to the three-point line. And Coach Bray told us that over the, over the fall, Burns is doing a really good job developing a nice little 15 to 18-foot mid-range jump shot. We saw him take the three earlier, so that shooting stroke definitely looks to be improved. But Burns somebody that obviously has a great vision, can be a great passer. But if he can be a scorer, just get, contributing a few points a game would be a huge boost to this Irish offense, the ability just to bring another scorer to the table. Yeah, turnover Gibbs. Out wide to Alexander being guarded by Mooney. At the left elbow, shot and a high rising arc. It goes down for Alexander. He now has seven points on the night, three of nine from the field. Oh, what a move by Farrell. Floater no good. Back up to that fast pace. The Irish still with a 17 point lead. Robinson getting the call from Christian. Head coach Jamie and Christian that is. His team's got 10 minutes left to try and get back into this one. Robinson, swing pass, Planutis. Now down low to Gomes. Robinson's got four on the shot clock. Diving towards the paint, puts it up. What a denial by Gibbs and a shot clock violation. Once again, the defense from Notre Dame forcing Mount St. Mary's into a late shot clock situation. And Gibbs getting the block on Robinson, nearing the end of the shot clock and forcing the violation. But we talked about Robinson, who stands just five foot, five foot five. Going up against Gibbs, who almost a foot taller than him at six foot three. 
That's the thing about Gibbs, too. He's not only improved offensively. We saw that with the 21 points against DePaul on Saturday. But defensively, he's a force to be reckoned with. Speaking of that, here's Colson. Turnaround jump shot. Takes a nice bounce and drops. 22 now for Colson. Now, when you're shooting as well as Colson is, you'll get that friendly roll every so often. And nice little friendly bounce off the iron here in Purcell Pavilion. The friendly confines, if you will, for the Irish. Planutis will fire away, and it's good. Bobby Planutis, the true freshman, took a fifth year in high school, that traditional year to play at Bridgeton Academy. He made 73-point field goals last season in his fifth year of high school, if you will. And knocks down another three. He's got nine tonight. Colson, another turnaround. Short on that one, had the opening. He's been given that all night. Telling himself just to put a little more on it as he was running back down the floor. Carey, spin move on Harvey, trying to drop it off. Turnover, here's Fluger. Fluger to the rim and puts it in. Left hand off the glass. He had Gibbs on the other side if he wanted to pass it off, but Fluger decided, I'm going to take this one myself. And extends the Irish lead back up to 18. A nice left-handed finish by the junior Fluger. Carey at the top of the key. Finds Antonio, who fires away another three. No good. Colson now in transition. He just got his 25th career double-double. Up and in off the feed from Fluger. And Notre Dame up by 20. We've usually seen a give and go from Farrell and Colson. This time a little different as Fluger and Colson ran the floor in transition. And how about the look from Fluger dishing it right back to the senior in the paint. Carey almost got it stolen away. Gets it back with 12 on the shot clock. Step back three. That's good. So Mount St. Mary's has hit the three ball tonight. They've taken a lot of them, but 11 for 31 from beyond the arc. Colson, Mooney. Fluger with a jump shot, no good. And rebound, Alexander. And they actually called that last shot a two-point field goal for Carey. And a foul there on the block. As we head to break, Bonzi Colson has now passed Monty Williams in Notre Dame history with 25 career double-doubles. He did it here, then in transition to Fluger, got it back, Irish by 18 at Purcell Pavilion. There's that Notre Dame bench. They've got an 18-point lead on the Mountaineers. And last Wednesday was National Signing Day for college basketball. And there is that class of 2021 right now ranked by ESPN as the third class in the nation. And you look at Ryan Humphrey on the left of Mike Bray and then all the way to the right, Ryan Ayers, along with Eric Atkins, former players of Notre Dame, have come back. And they've been really important in that recruiting process. And a lot of the news around Notre Dame and Mike Bray right now is this could be one of the best recruiting classes in Mike Bray's history here at Notre Dame. And you see four in the top ESPN top 100 really speaks that number three recruiting class in the nation and should be dynamite players for the Irish in the years to come here in South Bend. And I read about Prentice Hub. Fortunately, had an injury. He won't be able to play his senior season in high school, but he had a great job. Did a great job on Markel Fultz back in his sophomore year. Of course, Markel Fultz part of that Dematha program. That Mike Bray went to, Jaron Grant, former players, and you go all the way back to Adrian Dantley. And DJ Harvey currently on the roster of freshmen, and Martinez Gebbin able to put it in on the offensive side, 70-52 Irish. And Farrell rewarding him after the block Gebbin had on the other end. Gebbin got up and had a great denial at the rim and getting rewarded on the offensive end with a one-handed layup. And Gebbin does a good job getting up and on the ball. Irish got a steal there, and there is Ryan Ayers and Ryan Humphrey. The Irish rank 13th in the country right now, looking forward to that ACC play. Of course, we haven't even talked about the Maui Invitational that's coming up next week. 
But there's the ACC and the AP top 25. Duke number one, North Carolina number nine, Miami number 11, and Louisville still in the rankings as well. It's a tough conference every season. Notre Dame last year went on runs. They lost, they won their first five, lost their next five, and then won the next five. It's, it's something you got to do in the ACC. Yeah, the ACC, you mentioned, one of the top, toughest conferences, if not the toughest conference in college basketball. You've got to bring your A game every night. There's no easy opponents in this conference. And Mike Bray's told us a number of times, each game presents a new opportunity and new difficulty. But the Irish will just have to bring it every night and play a lot of tough games. They're actually the only team in the ACC that will have to travel to North Carolina, Duke, and Virginia. You saw those teams in the top 25. Virginia is just right outside. But the Irish have a very tough schedule having to face those three teams on the road. But nothing the Irish haven't seen before is they've had a lot of success on the road against teams like North Carolina, like Duke. So they'll have to do that once again this season. But if experience is anything, they'll have a great chance of doing that once again. The likes of Colson, Farrell leading them down the way. Great feed by Farrell. Gebbin unable to finish. And now reaching six minutes left here at Purcell Pavilion. Robinson controlling for the Mountaineers. Steps in, tried to step back and lost his control and traveled at the elbow. And a turnover on Robinson. Now his fifth on the night. It's been a tough second half for the senior guard who scored 20 points against Marquette on Friday. Matt Farrell getting trapped over to Fluger. Fluger finding Colson. And the Irish able to reset. Notre Dame with six turnovers. So good at that last season. Second best assist to turnover ratio as Fluger going up and gets the blocking foul and will head back to the line for his ninth and tenth attempt. And you mentioned the turnovers. This is the Mount St. Mary's team that came in. Really, you talked about the Mount Mayhem, their style of play that presses you, tries to force a lot of turnovers. But Notre Dame, one of the best teams in the nation, limiting those turnovers, second in the nation a season ago in assist to turnover ratio over two. But once again, Notre Dame just limiting the turnovers, only six tonight. And we came in talking about the press of Mount St. Mary's, if that would have any impact. And so far, the Irish have done a great job of breaking that press and getting past it and creating offensive opportunities. Really in transitions, they've been able to get right past the press of the Mountaineers. A lane violation on Fluger, trying to get that double-double. <laughs> and how about Fluger? Eight for nine, now eight for 10 from the stripe. And they're actually just way that off. So he's eight for nine for the free throw stripe. That's a career high. Eight free throw makes. Came in tonight with just four as his career high. And we see how active he is on the boards, kind of like Pat Connaughton was years back, playing the four, forward position really for Notre Dame. Fluger looking to fill that role, an air ball from downtown there by Abwe. And you can, you can argue very similar players, guys that can shoot, can handle the ball exceptionally well, but also play very strong defense. Fluger maybe a couple of inches shorter than Connaughton, but Fluger can definitely play bigger than his height, stands six foot six, but will often be called upon to guard the offense's best player, whether it's a point guard or even up to a forward. So Fluger shows a lot of versatility on both ends of the ball, and we've seen him have an increased role offensively this season and really grow into that role that Connaughton vacated. Harvey finishing off the glass as he cut through the paint and went to the right of the hoop. Harvey's got his first basket of the night, a little Bit of a more quiet night for the freshman who had an impressive debut with seven points. Inside, Robinson denied at the rim by Gebbin with 11 seconds left on the shot clock. Sixth block of the night by the Irish. Gebbin with another one. As he's been a force inside. We talked about the height of Mount St. Mary's, but Gebbin's done a really nice job negating that height advantage that the Mountaineers brought to the table. And an offensive foul on the screen by Omar Abwe. As Matt Farrell was trying to come around it. And the 13th turnover on the Mountaineers. Notre Dame shooting 47% from the field. They struggled. They were in the 30s in the first half. Three for 11 from the three-point mark. So not great from that. Spot on the floor, but still able to 
Find the inside parts. It's been mostly Colson, 10 of 14 for the night. Backdoor cut by Farrell, reverse layup. And what a pass from Martinez Gebbin. And even Gebbin, a six foot 10 forward, really all five guys on the floor can handle the ball exceptionally well. Obviously, Fluger, Gibbs, Farrell, and even Harvey, and obviously Bonte Colson, but Gebbin's somebody that doesn't get talked about a whole lot for his ball handling abilities. Usually we talk about him more on the defensive end, the rebounding side, but his offense has really grown over the last year especially with his play this summer in the World University Games. And if he can be somebody that can handle the ball down low and create opportunities and pass, that's something that really will be a dynamite force offensively for Notre Dame. And Colson hits from downtown. He's up to 27 points tonight. We saw Robinson on the other end with the layup. And Colson with the three. It's a 24-point game in favor of Notre Dame. Donald Carey has been a little more quiet this second half. Robinson with 14. Planudis for three, short. And Mount St. Mary's 10 for 32, and Farrell tripped up and fouled. As we will head to break, Farrell able to get up off the floor. It's been a Bonzi Colson show. 27 points, 11 rebounds, and the Irish in control here at Purcell Pavilion. Dominating fashion on display here for Notre Dame, and there's Rex Fluger. How about a first career double-double? Career high in rebounds with 10, career high in points with 14. So what a night for Rex Fluger. Also career high, the eight free throw makes as DJ Harvey knocks down a second jumper of the night. He's got four, and the Irish up 80 to 54. It's Gibbs, Harvey, Jogo, Burns, and Mooney for Notre Dame. I would knew Fluger would have an increased role offensively for Notre Dame coming into the year, starting in place of the departed VJ Beach and Steve Vastoria. But Fluger right away getting Involved offensively, those 14 points, 10 rebounds, first career double-double, and we saw him really shine, especially on the offensive rebounds. Fluger, of his 10 rebounds tonight, four came on the offensive glass. We saw a couple of really nice tip-ins, one reminiscent of the Stephen F. Austin game winner a couple of years back. But Fluger getting involved in a variety of different ways and a key contributor for the Irish en route to their 26-point lead right now. Abwe at the line makes one of two. He's got five of the night. Those are his first five points of his collegiate career. Here's Nicolo Jogo. And Nicolo Jogo, 6-7. And his career debut for Notre Dame. Played in the three exhibition games. Played well, too. But officially getting his first run in a white jersey as Burns, nice move, puts it up with the right hand. 82-55. Seen that a couple times from Burns today, getting inside, getting some really nice position on the block. And that right hand turnaround has been a money shot for him. Now seven points on two of four shooting. No good from Planudis. Also saw a three pointer from Burns earlier. His first career three. So that shooting stroke definitely improved over the last couple of years. The career night for everybody. And John Mooney on the right block able to put it off the glass. And this has become a 29-point game. Mount St. Mary's, though, is within eight at the half. As Carey will take this three, and it takes a couple of bounces and out of the rim. It's a Mount St. Mary's team, too, that should be proud of their showing so far this season. 0-2, they'll fall, too, after losses to Marquette and Notre Dame as Gibbs is off the mark. But they're a team that lost three other top four players last year. Elijah Long, Miles Wilson, and Mauda Sala all decided to transfer. Two, two of them going, actually all three of them going to Power 5 teams with Long to Texas, Wilson to Miami, and Sala to Kansas State. And it's a young team now, 12 freshmen on the roster. But head coach Jamie and Christian has done it before. This team, regular season champs in the NEC last year, also won the tournament championship, as you see John Mooney with a left-hand layup. They're going to be back, maybe not this year, but they'll be back sooner than later. And another thing to point out is Mount St. Mary's is getting a good taste of playing some of the top competition. You mentioned the loss against Marquette and obviously now against Notre Dame, but they're playing, they're, their non-conference slate does not finish with this Notre Dame matchup tonight. They also will play Georgetown and Pitt 
later in the season, actually in the next few games. So the opportunity to play some Power 5 teams in some of the best conferences in the country will give this Mount St. Mary's team a great taste of what it's like to be a top program. And you mentioned as they continue to develop those players and build the program over the next couple of years, it'll be some great experience as they look to get that experience and continue playing in the postseason. Abwe hit that three. He's got eight on the night. There's Matt Gregory now, a scholarship player in his senior season, has four career points. And, folks, whenever he touches the ball, the crowd will go wild, no matter the score, no matter the time. Also in there, Liam Nelligan getting his first action. He's a senior walk-on, terrific three-point shooter. As Harvey will stop, pop, and hit off the friendly roll. It's the second time we've seen a nice friendly roll from an Irish shot. We saw Colson get one from just about that exact same spot on the left side of the lane. A foul before the shot attempt. And going up strong there is Brandon Leftwich. A little story on Brandon Leftwich. Was a manager for the basketball team last season. He played one minute against Marquette. It's going to do the same here tonight. He went to the same high school as NBA legend and current St. John's head coach, Chris Mullen. That shot's good by Carey. Some great pedigree there with Leftwich. And you mentioned being a manager and now getting a chance to play on this team. Some great experience for the redshirt freshman out of Brooklyn. I mentioned that. Didn't mention the high school. Zavarian High School in Brooklyn, New York. And that's going to do it all here tonight at Purcell Pavilion. Mike Bray. Win number 384 at Notre Dame. And the Irish knock off the Mountaineers 88-62. to The Irish getting a 26-point win, really doing it all in every facet, offensively, defensively. Obviously, we see Colson get a, another double-double. But how about Rex Pfluger getting 14-10, his first career double-double. Farrell also con contributing 12 points. And it was a real team effort. And the Irish did it from a bunch of different ways and ultimately getting the 26-point win, moved to 2-0 on the year. Vonzi Colson, his 25th career double-double, ties Zach August in Notre Dame history. Also, Rex Fluger, his first career double-double, 14-10 and 10 for him. So, for Juan Jose Rodriguez, my excellent producer, Nathan Bush, I'm Nick Valdeseri saying so long from Purcell Pavilion. 88-62, the final here. All games airing on ESPN Networks are streaming live on the ESPN app, or to watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of the ACC Network Extra. Notre Dame back here on Thursday, hosting Chicago State on the ACC Network Extra. Saying so long one final time.